In this video, we're going to look at using face mask histograms and RGB numeric information on our images to help evaluate exposure. These techniques are really handy to use if you're on a monitor that may not be calibrated correctly or on a monitor that doesn't show brightness and or contrast accurately. So let's go into Photoshop and look at this and get started. Okay, I've opened these two images up into Photoshop, and I've just put some guidelines on there to set show um, to help me make sure I'm grabbing about the same area. To do a face mask histogram, I want to go to my marquee tool and be on the oval, oval marquee or the elliptical marquee, and then I want to make sure my feather is set to zero. To do the face mask histogram, I want to make a marquee selection that goes up into the hair contains the mask of the face and then down underneath the chin, like we see over here on the left. So I'm going to do that face mask histogram on both of these images in about the same area. When we're done, we can see on our histogram palette over here, it usually starts out in the color mode. If you don't see that color option, check to make sure that you're in the expanded view or the all channels view. For this illustration, we're going to work in the expanded view. The next thing to do is change that channel mode to the luminosity setting. This is just showing us density histogram or the brightness. So we're going to do that on both of these, make sure they're on luminosity. In evaluating the histogram, what I'm looking for is a gap left, which is this side right here, and a gap right, which is on this side over here and I want those to be about equal. In this case, I know I have a good exposure. It's slightly underexposed because I have more of a gap right than I do have a gap left. If we look at the second image, we can see we still have that gap left, but there's less space on the gap right. So this image is, is slightly brighter, which visually we're seeing that on the screen if we ignore the background information. The reason we do the face mask histogram or mask off just that part of the face is that's the part of the image that we're most concerned about and that's the information or that's the part of the image that we want to print very well. So looking at both of these images we can tell we have pretty accurate exposures. Let's look at another way we can evaluate exposure off of both of these images. The second way to do this is to come in under our eyedropper tool and grab the color sampler tool. I'm going to set my info or my palettes over here so I can see info. And as I move my cursor around on the image, we're going to see it displays an RGB number up in the right corner. So I'm going to zoom in on this image on the left and I'm going to look for a specular diffused highlight basically looking for some of the brightest part of the skin on the image. In this case, I picked the spot on her nose. For printing at H&H &H when I'm in the sRGB color space, I have found that if as long as that range falls between 235 and 242 for the red channel, H&H &H can make me a good print. On this example, we see my red channel is reading 237, so I know that I'm okay. Let's zoom up on this second image here, and we'll put a color sampler point as well. And on this one, we can see it's a little bit brighter. I'm hitting about a 238. So they're very similar, and again, I know that I'm in a good printing range. The next thing that I want to evaluate is shadow detail. So we're just going to look at this image here on the left. Because she has this dark black blouse on, I'm going to put a color co couple color samplers on that blouse. And for printing with detail on blacks, I want to see my RGB values be brighter than 15 to 20. In this case, I see um, color sampler number four, which is this very far edge, is giving me an 18. Color sampler number three, which is over here on her 
uh, other side is giving me a 41, and caller sampler 2 is giving me a 28. So I should be able to expect to see printable detail across her blouse without it blocking up and being solid black. So that's what I'm looking for. So looking at these numbers, skin tone between 235 and 242, and my black detail be br being brighter than 15 to 20 on my RGB numbers, I know that I'm going to get a good print off of this. For this next example, I have three images that I have bracketed the exposure on, and I want to use the face mask histogram technique and then evaluate the exposure across these three. So I'll do like I did previously, just marquee off the mask of the face, working to get about the same area across all three of these. And evaluate those face mask histograms. So starting on the image on the left here, this is actually about two-thirds of a stop underexposed. I can see I have a significant gap now on here on the right side. The middle image was what we chose earlier, which is pretty close to a correct exposure. Again, we see uh, a little bit more gap on the right, but not very much. And the third image we can see there is uh, much more information pushed to the right side of the histogram than on the left. We can validate that information by coming in and using our color samplers and looking where that red channel number falls. On this first one, we see that 252. On our second image, we have a 240. And on our third image, we are at a 200. So both with the face mask histograms and the info palette, we can check and verify our exposures. Next, we're going to look at face mask histograms across a variety of skin tones. In this example, we have three different skin tones. And these three images were captured um, at a shoot within moments of each other. So exposure-wise, there was very little change. Nothing changed to the lighting or in the cameras. And it's an, a good series to look through to evaluate um, how a face mask histogram is, can change from skin tone to skin tone. So if we start with the young lady in the middle, we can actually see these images are slightly underexposed because, because we have more of a gap on the right side. If we look at our info palette, we actually see we're at a 239, which is right there on the verge of the range where we want to be. If we move to the gentleman on the left side, we can see his actually drops down a little bit to a 231. And our histogram, again, has a little bit more gap on the left side. If we move over to the young lady on the right side, with her dark hair and scarf, we see everything has moved more to the left and evaluating the red channel, we see we're at a 227. So you can kind of use these as guidelines to say, based on the skin tone that I have, what should that face mask histogram look like? Once again, here is the young lady on the left, have a little bit more gap on it. We have a 229 for our red channel specular highlight. Here we have the young lady, have a little bit, she's got a decent tan, a little bit of gap on the right, but we still have an empty spot here on the left. And our info shows us 239. And for the last gentleman, um, still a, a little bit underexposed here, and our info palette puts us at 231. So again, that gives you a good guideline and range to look through. If you like this information or want further information on how to evaluate your images using the face mask histogram and RGB numbers in Photoshop, check out our full-length web class called Getting Good Color. You can find that on the h, &H website under the Inspire section and then under Workflow.